Okay, here we're going to look at the following um, application of a second order differential equation to a spring system. So let's just, re just recall our general formula for a uh, second order differential equation and a spring system is given by the following my double prime plus c y prime plus k y equals f where m is the mass of the object c is a constant related to the displacement sorry that is related to the damping and then k is the spring constant And finally, F is some external force. So, as we can see here, we are to assume that there's no damping, so that has um, a simplification effect. And uh, now, let's get in and read the setup and see if we can simplify any of the rest of it. So an object stretches a spring six inches in equilibrium, so we're not given the mass. Um, but we do see that there's nothing about an external force. So that means we can get rid of the damping component of this differential equation and we can get rid of the external force component of this differential equation. So let's see, this means m y double prime plus k y equals zero is the differential equation that we need to solve. And then the next thing that we can do is uh, move this around and maybe make it a bit simpler. So here we have y double prime plus k over m y equals zero. So now we have a pretty simple second order linear differential equation to solve. But we haven't used this fact that um, the object stretches the spring six inches in equilibrium. And so um, we can use that as follows. And so that tells us the following. That tells us that the mass times the force of gravity, so we know that that is always equal to the spring constant times delta L, where delta L is the um, stretch at equilibrium. And so we're given that is six inches. So uh, let's see what we can do from there. So that tells us the following. So that tells us that we can solve this for k over m. So that means k over m equals uh, the force due to gravity over delta L. And so now we're using kind of funky units here. We're using inches and feet and everything like that. So what we'll do is we'll use the fact that the force due to gravity is, um, or the acceleration due to gravity is 32 feet per second per second. And then since this is stretching um, six inches, that is one half of a foot. So that means this quantity is 64. This K over M quantity is 64. Great. So that means we have the differential equation Y prime plus 64 Y equals zero. Great. And in order to solve that, we need to look at a corresponding polynomial, u squared plus 64 equals zero, which that obviously has roots u equals plus minus eight i. And then from the theory of homogeneous second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients, we know that that tells us that y equals c1 cosine of 8t plus c2 sine of 8t. Okay. Good. So I'll clean up the board, then we'll start from here, and we'll see what we can get out of the second part of um, the question. Okay. So we've solved the homogeneous differential equation and got that our general setup is given by the following. So we have some constant times cosine 8t and some constant times sine 8t. Now we can look at um, the second bit of the problem and see if we can figure out what those constants are. So, find the displacement, so in other words, find the function y, given that it is initially displaced by 18 inches, and its velocity is 3 feet per second. So, um, let's see how we can do that. 
So since everything has been in feet, we probably want to write this 18 inches as one and a half feet. And now notice that's the same thing as having an initial displacement of 18 inches, which is three over two. In other words, one and a half feet. And then finally, we know our velocity is three feet per second. So that's the same thing as y prime of zero is equal to three. Great. So now what we can do is plug these two initial conditions into y and y prime, and we will be able to solve for um, c1 and c2. So let's do that. So we know y is equal to this, and we also know y prime will be equal to minus 8 c1 cosine of 8t um, plus 8 c2, uh, sorry, this should be sine, cosine of 8t. Good. And now, um, let's find y of 0. So we'll use the fact that sine of 0 is 0 and cosine of 0 is 1. So that gives us c1, which is 3 over 2. Great. And then we have uh, y prime of 0. So again, we'll use the fact that sine of 0 is 0 and cosine of 0 is 1. So this is 8. C2, which is equal to 3. Great, so that gives us C2 is equal to um, 3 over 8. Um, okay, now we're good to go. So we can plug this into the original and we get Y equals 3 over 2 times cosine of 8T. And then... <coughs> plus 3 over 8 sine of 8t. And that will be our final answer.